The Sony a7S Mark II is a hugely popular camera and it's become my go-to because it does so many things so well. Out of the box, perhaps the only essential thing that it's missing is a time-lapse feature, but that can easily be added by downloading this application. Let me show you. You can install the app over Wi-Fi, but I found it best to do it by connecting your camera to your computer via USB. Head to the Play Memories Camera Apps website, scroll down and you'll find the time-lapse app. It costs $7.99, but this is a lot cheaper than a lot of the time-lapse remotes that you'd need to buy in order to do time-lapse photography. You'll need to create an account on the Sony Entertainment Network, sign in and purchase the app. Connect your camera to your computer via USB, then scroll across to the toolbox in the menu, and there you'll find a USB option, and you want to make sure that's set to mass storage. Head back to the website, click install, and let the application download, and then you're ready to go. So I've come to one of my favorite time-lapse spots just in time for sunset. To start your time-lapse, make sure the camera is either in P, A, S, or M mode. I normally use M mode manual. Then go into the camera menu, scroll along until you get to the fourth set of options, and in there, there'll be an option called application list. When you open the time-lapse application, the camera's gonna run and respond a little bit more slowly than normal. So be prepared to press a button and wait an extra few seconds before the action happens. Once inside the app, you're gonna be taken to the application top, which gives you lots of different modes that you can choose, things like sunset, sunrise, night sky. Uh, I've tried these all out. Miniature's quite cool. It gives you that kind of miniature toy town tilt shift effect. I normally go just with custom though, as it gives you the most flexibility to choose the settings that you want. What's really cool about the app is that you can select the camera to take either individual photos, a video file, or both videos and photos. Photos. The video file comes out as an assembled time lapse on your memory card, and that's really useful when you need to turn around a piece of work really quickly and just save you going into After Effects or a similar program to assemble the time lapse. Before you start the time lapse, pressing the trash button will take a test shot. This means you're going to have a quick look how the shot's looking before you set the time lapse going. Then, to start the time lapse going, simply hold and press down the shutter button. So I've set my time lapse going, and what's really useful is it shows here on the screen how long your time lapse has got left to run. And that's really, really handy if you're on a production that's got a tight schedule and you need to make sure you're finished by a certain time to move on to the next shot. I'll talk more about the time lapse settings I like to use in a future video, but as a quick rundown, I normally shoot between an aperture of 4.0 or 5.6. I like to keep it nice and low, even for landscapes, because that just means that if you've got some dust or some spots on your sensor or your lenses, it just means that they're not there and they don't ruin the time lapse. Also, in bright situations like this, to get the correct exposure, I always use an ND filter. You can close the aperture to something like f14 or f16 or ramp the shutter speed up to a thousandth or two thousandths to get the correct exposure. An ND filter blocks out some of the light entering the camera. It means that you can use a shutter speed like a 60th or 100th to get the correct exposure. If you're shooting at a thousandth or two thousandths, the motion is going to look really choppy in staccato, but the sort of a 60th or 100th is going to get a nice bit of motion blur in each photo, and that's going to really make the time lapse look pleasing to the eye and look really natural. For choosing what interval you want between your photos, you're going to want to have a look at what's happening in your scene, kind of how fast things like clouds or people are moving. But if you're unsure, seven seconds is quite a good safe number to choose for your first time lapses. And that just means that there's going to be enough motion, enough movement happening in the shots between every photo to make it look natural. My final favorite thing with this app is that when the time lapse is finished, you can play it back inside the app and get a rough idea of how it looks. Time lapse is always a bit of a guessing game, so it's really handy when you're in the field to be able to have a quick look, get a rough idea of how it came out and decide whether you need to shoot it again or whether you can move on.